This episode is brought to you by PentesterAcademy.com, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Be sure to check out our latest attack defense gadgets on HackerArsenal.com. So you've probably heard of computer hacking, but have you ever heard of car hacking? Well, here at Hardware.io, you can put skills to the test that you didn't even know you had. Hey everyone, I'm here with Robert from the Car Hacking Village. Thank you so much for talking. Hi, thanks. So will you tell me a little bit more about your live demo? What do you got going on over here? So we had a couple of things going on. Um, over there we have a, a cluster which is controllable by the CAN bus. So the idea is that people will sit down at these computers and sort of learn how to interact over the CAN bus, try to send messages to the, to the cluster, try to get it to move, try to get the needles to do something fun. Um, just generally learn how to interact with vehicle networks. Okay. Yep. And then over here, yeah. um, we have uh, an RF demo. So we okay. have a key fob and um, something called the Yardstick One that allows uh, people to receive and send key fob data. So with the goal of them to uh, learn how to receive key fob information and send it to try to emulate a key fob. Okay, nice. And I got to ask, what made you interested in getting into car hacking in the first place? How'd you get into this? Um, I started young. Um, I've been uh, messing around with cars, uh, learning how they the systems work just for fun back when I got my first car. Um, I've always loved electronics. I love vehicles. Uh, I'm from the Michigan area near Detroit. And so I've always just been kind of a gearhead, but uh, I also, also love electronics. And so it just seemed like a natural natural like path for me to to learn how vehicle electronic systems work um, since I was young I couldn't just figure it out or re there wasn't any documentation I just had to figure it out for myself um, so that's what I did I eventually made a business out of it figuring out how electronic systems work for other companies and uh, here we are today doing a car hiking village for uh, everybody here hopefully and to learn how to do these systems. Nice, okay. And so obviously, you know, most people wouldn't even think about hacking a car, right? But you know, nowadays there's a lot of Teslas on the road. Almost every yeah. other car is a Tesla. Yeah. What are your what do you think about that? What's what's your thoughts on that? On the fact that there are Teslas? Yes. And and <laughs> no, it's fine. And the fact that, you know, do you see that as something that's easily hackable now with these new smart driving cars essentially? Yeah, so as cars progress, we're adding more and more electronic features in vehicles. Um, Tesla is definitely one of the ones that has, you know, it's a full electric car with a lot of electronics that control those systems. Um, personally, I love it. You know, that's kind of my opinion. Uh, I think more technology in cars is a good thing. Um, just because I enjoy uh, all of the features that they bring, you know, like heated cooled seats and, and uh, you know. Warm bar. Yeah, the warm, yeah, exactly, that kind of stuff. And um, also just, you know, cars are eventually going to be starting to communicate with each other, which is actually a good, it could be a safety feature, right? If your car in front of you is able to tell the cars behind you that they need to stop, that could be really interesting. But there's a level of, you know, fear, which makes sense. Like, what if that car isn't a real car and it's, it's some hacker that's saying, hey, this your car in front of you is stopping when it isn't. How does that affect the overall performance of these systems? And so for, for me personally, it's not necessarily hacking the cars for malicious reasons, but just to understand how these systems work um, and to use them for whatever application we're trying to do. And so if it's to learn how these systems work just to better secure them, that's awesome. If it's to learn how the, they work so that you can make something cool new widget that the OEMs haven't thought of yet, um, that's also cool too. So. Nice, okay. And I know you touched on it briefly, but what are some of the like negative implications, I guess, of someone being able to get in and really hack someone's car? Well, I mean, besides the obvious, you know, uh, uh, if if a if a somebody tries to hack a car that's driving on the road and um, is is successful, which is uh, just not necessarily something that you can just do. You have to spend a lot of time on. It's successful. They there there are some issues where maybe they can uh, change the the features of the vehicle so that the car doesn't operate 
as it's supposed to, maybe changing the steering wheel uh, angle and, and moving the car or, or activating the brakes or dis disabling the brakes. Wow. Now, these are always, these are very challenging steps mm -hmm. that, that aren't just one hack, there are multiple hacks string together. Okay. Um, and so, so when we talk about them, we, we, we say, okay, well, it's, it, it potentially possible, but the likelihood is low. Um, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. So the more uh, work uh, security researchers do, um, the better it is that these systems are more secure. And as we create newer and newer systems, you know, if we don't constantly uh, pay attention and we aren't constantly vigilant about vehicle security, we could accidentally expose these issues uh, down the road. Wow, that's, yeah, that's a little bit dangerous then. It could, <laughs> it could be. be, yeah. So just, you know, what do you think? What do you, when you see the future of, you know, cars and self-driving vehicles possibly in, you know, the next 50, 100 years, what do you see in the future? Where do you see it going? Well, I definitely see autonomous vehicles um, happening, um, if not because of people, because of commercial applications, right? Um, over the road, long haul truck drivers um, uh, are probably going to be some of the first affected with autonomous vehicles because if you can uh, have your your driver of your of your truck ha sleep in the cab while the, the truck continues, well, there's a huge economic advantage of that. Um, and then eventually, maybe there isn't going to be a driver or one driver for a long fleet of vehicles. Um, so we'll see what direction it goes. And speaking of Tesla, they were announcing their new truck, you know, electronic truck, and it'll have autonomous features, I'm sure. And it, so it's definitely a direction that the commercial industry is, is begging for because it, it can save them a lot of money and time and cost. But also we'll start to see it in over-the-road vehicles as well. Uh, not, not necessarily for your everyday driver, but for maybe... Um, going to pick up the groceries, right? Or going to uh, drop the kids off at school. Something, you know, something really simple. Uh, some of these daily activities are ch more chores that we want to sort of start. And that's, that's how we'll progress and sort of get used to the technology. And then eventually maybe we'll put ourselves in the car and drive ourselves to Florida or something like that. Yeah. yeah awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robert. I really appreciate you no, talking you. with me. No thank you. This episode was brought to you by Pen Tester Academy the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. 